Welcome to Glycon. Glycon is a motion capture studio in a box. Well, it's in VR, but it works with any VR headset and it can export precision animations for any 3D engine. Glycon is designed to help you animate better, faster, and easier than any other tool. We are stupid excited for Glycon version 70, from the new user interface to cutting edge tech built specifically for each platform. Today I'd like to show you what Glycon for the Meta Quest can do. For part of this video, I'm going to use the Meta Desktop version. I'm actually using a Meta Quest and a Link cable. I'm doing this because it will let me record at a higher quality and size than the recordings inside the Quest natively, but the app and what I see in the headset is exactly the same. So here we go. Glycon is an app that runs on your PC or in your uh, Oculus Quest headset. Uh, when you first open it, you may find that you're facing the wrong direction. You want to push the bottom button on each of your controllers, and that will reorient you facing straight ahead. And then, if you push either of the bottom buttons, it's going to pop open your HUD. And if you hold the button down and move it around, you can move that heads-up display around. If you pop it open with the right side, then all of the options are oriented so that you can easily select them with your left hand. If you open it with your left hand, the options are oriented so you can open them with your right hand. Um, it's pretty straightforward and I think you're going to like it. It's pretty easy to use. So one of the first things we want to do is we're going to hop in here. I'm going to change the display. Uh, since I'm using the Oculus desktop version to show you the Quest uh, version, um, if that makes any sense. I can actually set my, uh, I can use this, the option to uh, change the cameras here. And I'm going to do that until I find one that is uh, a little easier to see. There we go. Okay. So what I want to do is go into user info and type in my height here. And this is going to be so that my arms and legs and everything else match me as they are in the real world. So when I move around, my avatar moves around basically at the same rate. Um, you can tweak that in here. This number is not cur currently correct. And furthermore, I'm sitting down, so it doesn't really matter what number I put in here. Uh, but it's if you're trying to get something accurate, this is where to go. Also, you can change colors now of the um, avatar itself. And uh, it's right there. That's, that's where that is. So we're going to go with this color scheme. It's pretty easy to see and uh, continue from there. On the headset, if you're using... Uh, the Steam version or any number of things, you can actually change uh, the headset settings and stuff like your manual override for a bunch of this stuff. We're not going to touch that right now. Um, we're going to go into Avatar here. And I want to show you a few things real quick. You can change things like the head to chest stiffness. And I'm going to show you this on the... We're going to go with the uh, mirror display so you can see this a little easier. That should be good. All right, so if I open... Um, that same setting there under avatar and I go to head torso. If I change my head to chest stiffness, you'll notice that when I move my head back and forth, my chest moves around. Okay. And if I turn it off, if I set it low, you'll notice that my chest does not move around so much. So find something in there that you like, gives it a little bit of a little bit of shoulder wiggle. Uh, that makes movements look a little more natural. And you can mess with some of the other settings here like the chest to hand rotation. Uh, if you see my moving my hands like this, the chest isn't really moving. If I set it higher, now my chest is moving much faster. So that's what that's all about. Um, there are all kinds of avatar settings and, and IK settings and stuff that you can tweak uh, in this menu on the, uh, on the avatar one. So let me switch us back to the view that we can see there. Very good. So that's under avatar. Um, lower body, I, if you click on lower body, I know it says fingers here. This is, I'm, I'm still shuffling stuff around. Uh, but basically this lets you toggle between sitting and standing. Uh, then we have feet, and this lets you toggle between hovering and shuffling. And let me show you what that looks like real quick. So especially on the Oculus Quest, this may be important to you. Uh, you may be in a situation where you have a third party tool uh, that you're going to be tweaking the animations in. And so what, what you might want is to just completely swap out the lower body with some other animation, uh, for example, for, for walking between two points. Since the Oculus Quest doesn't actually do leg tracking currently, 
Um, so we're going to click on hover here and you'll notice that my lower body simply hovers over uh, the ground wherever my upper body is. And that's what that's about. And shuffle moves it back to where your feet kind of shuffle around. Okay, weapons, this is pretty straightforward. Weapons. Um, on the weapons, you'll notice that uh, some of them have two hands. Now, there's a whole weapon system overhaul that I'm in the process of doing right now. Um, but in the meantime, notice that the weapon system lets you have one arm as the as the uh, elbow and the other arm and the hands actually match on the weapon. So if you're recording motion capture for this, um, for example, then your hands are going to automatically track to the weapon. Uh, you're never going to lose that tracking. And so you don't have to worry about you know, acting like you're holding a weapon. Same with a long sword. Uh, both hands are attached to the base uh, next to each other, and, and so you don't have to worry about um, losing the, the tracking there either. I'm going to switch back to none and continue. So virtual sets. Okay, this is a really cool one, and um, hmm, maybe the best way to show this one is going to be um, a different camera angle. Top down might show it pretty well. Okay, so we're going to go to virtual sets. Now, what I'm going to do here is on the virtual set, I can choose the brush. And as long as my window is open, but it's out of the way, so I'm not clicking on it, then on either hand, I can draw. And I can draw, and it, it's going to create an object in 3D space. And I can go back over here, and I can set it to eraser, and I can erase. Now, the cool thing is that you can basically create an, an an object like this, and then uh, you can export it. So you can go in here and export this as an OBJ file, and then pull it up in your 3D program and replace it with um, a model or something like it. If, if you were going to do, like, say, you wanted to, to act like you're programming a computer, right? So you have your, your programming keyboard here, and uh, there we go. Okay, and, and then I do my motion capture for this. And then when I'm done, if I export this uh, as an OBJ, then this object will be the correct height and everything else that I can just easily replace this with a 3D model. And it's gonna look perfect, it's gonna match perfectly up with my, um, my uh, uh, motion capture. Okay, so we're going to, for now we're going to delete our, our extremely nice uh, keyboard here. Okay, so arena. Um, this is really cool. This lets you switch between different uh, arenas. So uh, here is, for example, the, the dojo from earlier versions of Blackon. You can actually import your own. I don't have a good one in here to show that off, but that's for another video. You can bring in your own, your own environment, basically. Same for props. You can bring in your own props. That's going to be for another video also. And for audio, oh, let me, sh let me switch to uh, a view that you can see this easier. Okay, so for audio, um, what we're looking at is you can either bring in your own audio that's going to play automatically when you record something to see if you, you know, let's say that you have a, let's say you have drums that you want to play along with or a guitar or something like that, then this is where you could put that in, or a, a song or something like that, or a speech, if you have a speech you're trying to, to, to reenact, that's where you would bring in this audio, it will play automatically as soon as you hit the record button, then boom. Um, or you can actually set it to record so that it will record through your headset. Okay, um, and then, uh, so that, that gets us to, uh, to cue cards. The cue cards is the next one, and this is really cool. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is, uh, since I am on the desktop version, you'll be able to see this very easily, I'm gonna switch over to my cue cards folder, and I'm gonna create a new um, text file, and I'm gonna call this uh, fun. It can be anything. And then I'm gonna open that text file and I'm going to type something. Okay, so let's say that this uh, exciting piece of prose is exactly what I want to say, but I keep screwing up my line. Well, if I hop in here and I have typed that and saved that in that position, uh, I can reload this and now, now you'll see that there is actually a cue card floating here in midair. And I'm gonna to switch to another display so I'm going to show you this one. Uh, let's see, we'll go to uh, third person. If the cue card window is open, 
then all I have to do is click and I can drag this around and I can use the joystick on the hand that I clicked on uh, to resize it and place it anywhere in my scene that I want. So if I want it very, very small, but I want it right next to me, I can do that. Or if I want it very far away, I can do that. And then and gigantic. I, maybe I have it up here, you know, I, I don't know. But if you have some text that you need to remember uh, during your mocap, I meant to say that exactly, yes, that's what I meant, nothing less. Well, this is where you would put it, and then you don't have to worry about trying to remember stuff. One of the most important things, obviously, is the concept of recording the actual motion capture. And to do that, it's very simple. On either controller, you can push the top button. In this case, it's going to be on the Oculus Quest. It'll be the Y or the B buttons. And as soon as you push one of those buttons, if you look up here, you'll see where it says Glycon3D.com right now, it'll change to 3, 2, 1 and start recording. So if I push one of the top buttons, it's going to do that. 3, 2, 1, and now it's recording. Got the red light on at the bottom, and it says recording at the top. And anything I do right now, it is actually recording um, the motion capture for it. And when I'm done, all I do is I push that same top button again, and it will stop. And that's all there is to it. Now, if I want to capture uh, hand tracking, it's it's just as easy. Uh, basically, um, I can hit the uh, I can I can take the hand controllers and set them down, and it should, after a couple of seconds, pop into um, hand tracking mode. And now you'll see that there's a record stop button there, and if I push that button, it will start recording. Now. <laughs> Oddly enough, that's actually slightly out of reach for me right now, so I need to move that. So I'm going to grab my hand controllers again, and I'm going to grab the, I'm going to go to um, recording and click on that first recording button right there. And there's a button, the thing here that says recording stop button. And this explains what the stop button is. I'm just going to click on position, and I'm going to pull the trigger. And I'm going to set this right here in front of me. And now that's the position for the um, for the hand tracking. So if I set these, if I if I close the menu, set my hand controllers down, give it a couple of seconds, move my hands all around a little bit in front of my uh, in front of the headset, it will now switch to that mode. And now all I do is touch that button, and it's going to start recording. Three, two, one. Now I'm recording. And I'm recording uh, high resolution finger tracking. So I can do all kinds of weird little finger tricks here and it's going to record them. And then when I'm done, I just hit stop again. And that's all there is to it. And it's finished the export. So grab the controllers and I pop this back open. Okay, so that is all you have to do to get hand tracking uh, on Oculus Quest. So I want to show you another thing on an Oculus Quest. Um, that's that's pretty important to know and that is how to get your files off there and if you click on files right here it will take you to this i'm going to click this button here to reload that shows us that we have two new files that have not been transmitted to anything now we can either open this up in the um, android app uh, the android uh, file transfer app on the mac or on the windows explorer on the pc plug in the headset and then dig down to find them. And if you want to, you, you can do that. They're listed here under um, under Format. When you click on Format, it'll tell you, because it has lists the, the format that you're currently recording in. At the bottom, it will say where the file can be found. You can pull that up here and look, and that's exactly where it's going to be found on, on the uh, file system. But there's an easier way now. We are going to use a new app called Glycon Studio. Okay, so we've recorded some motion capture and we want to transfer it to a PC or Mac. The easiest way to do that is going to be through uh, the new Glycon Studio system. Glycon Studio is an app that runs on your PC or Mac. So at this point, I'm going to fire that up. In this case, I have it running on a Mac. I'm going to fire that up and show you what that looks like. Okay, so here it is on the desktop on my Mac. And as you can see here, it says I have an IP address of 192.168.120. Well, I want to um, I want to put that on 
the in the Oculus uh, in the uh, Meta Quest version of Glycon, I need to enter that here. So here we have um, the studio IP address. Is set, it's currently set to one twenty seven zero zero one, and we're going to set that to that other number. So that's going to be one ninety two. Let's clear this out. One nine two. One six eight. What was the rest of it? One and twenty. Two zero. Okay, so one nine two, one six eight, one twenty. I hit the uh, save button, and you'll notice that light turns green, and that means we're now connected. So, if we pull this up close, we can see this. We have three files. We have uh, three different FBX files. I want to send. Um, Actually, we're going to send one at a time, see what happens. There we go. That's what I thought. Okay, so we got the first one. It says sent, and we're going to select uh, none, and then we'll do uh, new. And so this is going to select everything that's not one of the already sent files, and we're going to click send. And now you'll see that all three of them say sent. And if we go over here on look on the uh, desktop, uh, oh, I see that it's already updated that, so we're good. So if I wanted to, I could now select all, and I could delete these. And now I've cleaned up some space. I've got the files on my desktop, and everything is good. That is how the new file system works with Glycon Studio. Thank you very much for watching so far. Uh, I'm going to continue this in a second video tomorrow. I just wanted to go ahead and get this one out there so you can see it. Uh, by the way, this version of Glycon for Oculus Desktop, I'm sorry, MetaQuest, what is it? Meta Desktop is going to be on the website for all registered users right now. Um, and the updated version of the Quest app will be out tomorrow. Thanks and have a great day. Can't wait to see what you guys make with version 70 of Glycon 3D.